The COVID-19 pandemic overnight turned upside down the world which we thought we knew. As businesses scrambled to adapt to the new normal, they found themselves putting into place untested and experimental measures to deal with the scale of the emergency, from safety procedures to deal with the immediate threat of the virus to longer term solutions like remote working, to ensure the continued operation of business in a time when it was no longer safe to meet face to face. Overall, the measures that were taken compounded to have unintentional effects in a variety of arenas, such as the increased degree of digital transformation in the everyday processes and dealings of business. COVID-19 has been a real accelerator for digital transformation. And that's happened, I guess, in two different ways, right? So there's the customer facing side of the business, where you can no longer use the bricks and mortar and traditional delivery methods, and customers who may have been reticent to using those digital platforms are now using those digital platforms and are quite happy doing so and will never go back. So if you want to continue to, to service those customers or, or gain those customers from your competitors, you're going to have to make that digital transformation yourself. But secondly, it's changed the way both employers and employees think about what work is. We were all forced to work from home uh, during periods of COVID. And many of us didn't think we might be able to do our jobs that way and many employees didn't think the company would function that way. This has proved to both employers and employees that you can work that way. And that has opened up a whole load of opportunities in terms of where you might work, who you might employ, um, and how you structure your business. I think the key to a successful digital transformation is getting the foundations in place, right, so that you can overlay digital technologies that you look at it at not just the customer facing side of digital transformation, but digitizing the internal processes and supporting your employees. Uh, and thirdly, looking at digital transformation, not as a single event, but as creating a platform from which you can continue to transform your business. If you don't get those foundations in place, then the customer journey starts to get broken up and difficult, right? So a customer wants to contact you on one of those digital channels, but you don't have the processes to make that a seamless experience. And from an employee perspective, then when you're working at home or you're doing whatever, those digital applications don't work well, they're not easy to work with, and you end up breaking that whole gain that you're trying to make from slick processes um, and great customer experience. I think it's this fear of the new. Change is always difficult in an organisation. There are people who cultural, uh, I guess, resistance to, to making changes and sometimes you feel you don't want to fix something that isn't broke, but you don't realise actually those old systems are broke and that there are customers out there who are accessing your competitors' platforms through diff different channels that you just simply can't deliver with your old systems. There's two sides of that, there's the customer side and there's the employee side. On the customer side, opening digital channels to new routes to market is going to be absolutely important in terms of how you retain and attract new customers. And what you want to be able to do is use the data that is generated in those environments to really understand the customer's journey, what they're doing, personalise that experience and make that experience completely effortless. And with an effortless experience, you're going to drive up loyalty and you're going to increase advocacy. And the story is really similar there with employees, right? So you want to do the same thing with employees. You want to attract and retain staff. You want to develop a culture that they belong to. And again, technologies that can allow people to collaborate smoothly, whether they're in the office, whether they're at home, whether they're in some other location, uh, have a shared space where they can interact, um, is going to be the tool set that allows you to build that culture, retain staff, and attract new staff. It's definitely not just about technology, but I'm not sure I would say there's a, there, there is a digital culture that you need to develop inside a business. I think there's an ingredient you need inside that culture, a common ingredient, which is a change mindset. You need that change mindset because firstly, you need your employees to accept that first change, right? It's very easy for employees to say, we've never done it that way before. I wanna keep on doing it the same way I did before. Secondly, you need that change mindset to really take advantage of the digital platform you've created because digital platform is not about one change, it's about creating an environment that you can more easily transform your business and make changes. So you need that culture or that mindset in your culture that you're constantly looking for new ways of improving customer service, improving processes, and then de delivering those digitally through that platform. 
many owners or managers of businesses try to develop a culture in their business. And that culture is borne out through social interaction, often in person in an office. You can't do that in a remote environment. And so you have to find different ways of helping people feel like they belong um, uh, to, to the company and develop that company culture. And so you, you, if you can't do that in person, then you've got to do that through a digital platform. So you need a collaboration platform internally that allows people to seamlessly work with each other and to develop a, a belonging to the company. Because if you don't do that and they don't feel like they belong to the company and they don't feel that culture, then they're going to go somewhere else. Culture is always an active process, whether it's in person, in an office, or it's remote. But you've just got to think of it slightly differently in how you do that. You can't say it's drinks night on a Friday uh, and everyone else goes out together to, to develop that culture. You need other ways of delivering those interactions because it's all about trust and relationships that deliver that culture and you need a way of communicating and collaborating remotely that allow you to develop those personal relationships, the trust and be part of that culture. So moving forward, businesses should look how they can build that digital platform as a foundation on which they can continue to innovate. So the first step is on a customer service perspective. You need a digital platform which is what they call omni-channel which has the ability to service your customers in whatever channel that they want to discuss their topic with you, right? So whether that is face-to-face -face in a branch, whether that's on a telephone, whether that's through WhatsApp, whether it's through Facebook Messenger, you want a platform that can communicate in all those different channels uh, as one single platform. So all of that information comes together and you have a, a true picture of your customer and their journey. So then what you want to be able to do is to use that context that you've gained from all of those interactions and personalize the experience for that customer. So rather than when a, you know, when a customer calls into a, a, a contact center, they have to press one for sales, two for whatever, it's the same journey every single time. That's the first thing you need to avoid. You want to understand the context of that customer's interaction and then personalize that experience. Oh, I, hi John, uh, I see that you've missed this flight. Uh, would you like me to book another one? Next time you call in, it's going to be a completely different journey. And so having that context and that personalization is a key to really streamlining that kind of digital transformation, making life easy for customers and driving that advocacy uh, and loyalty to customers and obviously competing in the, in the marketplace. And the story's, again, it's completely similar from a, uh, an employee expect perspective. It's so easy now for employees to move from one employer to another in a remote working basis. They don't need to be local to that business to go and work there now. They can work anywhere in the world for a competitor. So you need to retain that talent and attract new talent. And to do so, you need to make their life effortless. And making their life effortless from a, a hybrid perspective is going to be facilitated by technology. So putting in place a network which allows them to access all the tools that you can access in the office smoothly, easily, collaborate, uh, and do that securely, of course, um, and a set of collaboration tools that allows them to collaborate and feel part of the business. So once you have those in place, then you can start iterat iteratively transforming your business step by step, um, making yourself more competitive in the market. We started this programme by looking at the changes wrought by the COVID-19 pandemic. But these changes are not happening in a vacuum. What is coming into the existence is the shape of the 21st century, and understanding the role of business in this is the key question of our increasingly digital future.